And now onto our dinosaur of the day, Atlasaurus, which was a request from Cha Raptor and Paleo Mike 716 via our Patreon and Discord. So thanks. It was a sauropod that lived in the Middle Jurassic in what is now Morocco in the Guetioa Formation. It looked somewhat like Brachiosaurus with an upright neck, and it's closely related to Brachiosaurus. There's a lot of similarities in the vertebral column and the limbs, but it is different in that it had a proportionately larger skull, a shorter neck, a longer tail, and longer limbs. And it's also about 15 million years older than Brachiosaurus. <laughs> That's quite a bit older. Yep. The authors that named Atlasaurus described it as a moderately large adult sauropod with unusually long forelimbs and moderately long hind limbs. So the skull is large, the neck is short, the tail is long, and the limbs are very long. Does sound pretty Brachiosaurus-like, especially with those longer forelimbs given that upright sort of posture. Yeah. The short neck is interesting. They found at least 13 neck vertebrae. And the neck's about 12.7 feet or 3.8 meters long. That is short. I think the iguanodont you had last week or the week before, you said the neck was like five and a half long, <laughs> which is only half the size of this neck. Seems crazy. Yeah, dinosaurs are weird. <laughs> Atlasaurus is estimated to be about 49 feet or 15 meters long and weighed 22 and a half metric tons. Ooh, it's bulky. Mm-hmm and had spoon-shaped teeth. The type species is Atlasaurus imalei. The fossils were found in 1981, a nearly complete skeleton with a skull, and it was described in 1999 by Mombaran, Russell, and Tiquette. The genus name means Atlas lizard, and it refers to the Atlas Mountains where the fossils were found, as well as its size, and the Atlas Mountains were named after the Titan Atlas who held up the sky. The species name means giant in Arabic. Okay, that's, I was expecting that the Atlasaurus, when you were talking about the skull, meant that the Atlas, which is kind of like the last vertebrae mm. before the head, was going to be different. But I guess it's just because it's really big. Yeah, and where it was found. Now, according to the 1999 paper, quote, the relative completeness of the skeleton suggests that the animal was born away and drowned in a flood, then caught on an oxbow or meander and rapidly covered by fluvial sediments mixed with vegetation, end quote. And that partially protected it, though there were some theropod teeth found nearby that were associated with the skeleton, which is kind of interesting. I feel like the theropod teeth thing, there's just theropod teeth everywhere because yeah. there were some theropods that lost teeth like every single month. <laughs> That's true. So <laughs> in the fossil record that, you know, you never know, was that theropod there chewing on it or was it just there a few days earlier or later dropping teeth like no tomorrow? <laughs> <laughs> there was a second specimen of Atlasaurus found with a nearly complete tail, also from Morocco found in the 1980s, took 300 hours to clean and prepare. And this specimen ended up in Mexico and was on display in the lobby of BBVA Bancomer Tower in Mexico City. And then in 2018, it got auctioned off to an anonymous businessman to help pay to rebuild some of the 5,000 schools that were damaged in the 2017 Puebla earthquakes, which killed 480 people and caused billions of dollars in damage. Usually I'm not a big fan of selling scientifically important fossils, but if you can help rebuild 5,000 schools, it's pretty hard to argue <laughs> with well, that justification. just wait till you hear the whole story. So this tail was about 13 feet or four meters long, and it weighed 396 pounds or 180 kilograms, and it was about 70% complete. So it's a good specimen. Yeah. And they managed to prepare that in 300 hours. That's that's actually pretty quick. When you hear 300 hours, it sounds like a long time. But when you know it took 4,000 hours to prepare some stuff that's like 10 feet long, yeah, <laughs> it's not bad. I think it might have taken more than 300 hours because it was somewhere that said 300 hours to clean and then it was sent to Utah to be assembled. Okay. So it might have been a little longer. Morocco usually has not that difficult of sediment from preparing from, from what I've seen. Mm. Well, the tail, it was to be auctioned at a reserve price of about 95800 U.S. dollars. And if it sold for more, anything over that reserve price was to go to the schools that were damaged. Okay. It ended up selling for, I think, from what I found, ninety six to 97000 U.S. dollars, though some places said that the final sale price was unknown. So it's kind of mixed there in terms of how much it sold for. 
So not a lot for the schools. No, although one, at least one article suggested about 21,500 U.S. dollars ended up being donated. It doesn't seem like that would repair 5,000 schools. No, it just, it helps a little, I guess. But after the auction, authorities in Morocco opened up an inquiry about how that tail ended up in Mexico, whether it was illegally exported or not. And the head of Morocco's Cultural Heritage Department said that they would repatriate the fossil. So first they contacted the auction house to confirm that the seller was legally allowed to sell this fossil. And they said if that was the case, they would buy the fossil back from the new owner and bring it back to Morocco. Hmm. But if that wasn't the case, the Moroccan embassy in Mexico City would use a specific procedure to cancel the sale and repatriate the fossil. And they'd had success in the past because in 2017, they'd successfully removed a plesiosaur that came from Morocco from an auction in Paris. And it turns out the tail was sold to an unspecified agency. The auction house Morton said that the tail was acquired from the Petra Gallery, and they said that the fossil was legally purchased in the U.S., and now, unfortunately, I couldn't find an update on what ultimately happened. Maybe there's some stuff still going on because this started in 2018. But it's interesting because it's illegal to sell fossils in Mexico that were found in Mexico, but you can sell fossils found in other countries in Mexico. <laughs> interesting. Yeah. So, I mean, on the surface, it sounds like, yeah, that's good. We're going to help rebuild schools. Uh, but there's a little more backstory there. Yeah, and they, they didn't get much money, and it may have been an illegal sale. Yeah, it's a little unclear there, at least from what I could find. Uh, Atlasaurus was featured in the 2002 documentary that was published by Discovery Channel called Tracking Africa's Dinosaurs. That sounds like a good one. I don't remember hearing about that one before, but a Brachiosaurus-like sauropod that had a relatively short neck and is mm -hmm. 15 million years older than brachiosaurus and we have a skull of and a good tail so we know a lot about what it looks like that's pretty cool dinosaur yeah for those of you who listen to our dinosaur of the day segment and you like it please consider becoming a patron we take new dinosaur of the day requests from our patrons and offer a bunch of other perks as well so check out our page at patreon.com slash i know dino or click the link on the left